Hi, my name is Arjun Kamdar and I'm an MSc student in Wildlife Biology and Conservation with the National Center of Biological Sciences, Bangalore. So my thesis is titled Understanding Human-Elephant Conflict as a Public Good, What Enables Fence Maintenance? So in the country, close to 500 people and over 100 elephants die each year due to negative interactions between the two species. And not only that, it, negative interactions also lead to a loss of livelihoods, loss in the deterioration of the quality of life for both the species, for elephants as well as for humans. So it's of growing importance to help um, both the species coexist. And in order to do this, one of the several interventions that are in place is the use of non-lethal power fences, which give the elephants a shock, in or, uh, but do not kill them and do not harm them in any way, just to, in order to keep them away from uh, you know, human habitation. However, these fences require people to come together collectively um, to you know, reap the benefits. Because if even one person out of the community of people that are meant to maintain the fence and ensure that it's functional and you know, well-maintained, um, even if one person you know, does not do their part, then the entire fence fails. So this is exactly like a public good. Right, where all the people um, you know, who are beneficiaries to a system have to agree on a set of norms, a set of rules in order to make this work. So that's essentially what happens here as well. These fences are set up with the help of either government or um, private NGOs and given to communities who are then entrusted with its maintenance. However, despite its uh, you know, effectiveness, with people saying it's close to 80 to 90 percent effective in deterring elephants, only about 66 percent of these are actually well maintained and functional. And this is a very counterintuitive question because here we have a problem and we have a technical solution to it, but yet the social and the governance systems do not allow the, the solution to actually be functional. So my question was to understand why this is happening. And uh, I used, um, I studied this system in the Assam, um, in the state of Assam, in the Brahmaputra uh, Valley. And uh, we found uh, that uh, using sociological and ecological tools, you know, such as camera traps to understand elephant behavior, and of course, a host of sociological and social science uh, methods to understand this system better, to understand governance systems, monitoring systems, and using Ostrom's framework which helps us understand and decipher the complex and chaotic nature of such systems, you know, because it can't have the conventional, you know, control and treatment way. So we have to innovate and use several newer and uh, cutting edge, sophisticated uh, so social science methods. And we found that um, we've, we found what actually works and what systems work and where do systems fail. So to understand the causal links. And that's what the thesis is about.